have that one planted, dude, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Last we left off, we had a wonderful, beautiful, fantastic trivia date with Hugo. And we were walking uh, Mary home. Because we were absolutely... It's okay to cry if you're feeling sad. Thanks, Dream Daddy. You're so kind. Um... Absolute fucking sweetie pie. Um, we already did this. Alright. Welcome. You've got dads. I've got dads. Craig! Hello, Amanda's dad. Okay. It's me, Craig. Your friend who loves sports. I have nice and smart children who are good at computers. Ah, man, great to hear from you, buddy. What's up? I'm still strong. <laughs> oh, no. Strong. I am strong. <laughs> Don't I know it. This is obviously Craig's children. Say, I've been reading up about whey protein. You use that at all? I figured it'd help me develop a bit more muscle. Yes, I know what that is. My children are having a tea party. They wanted to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. You're also invited. Physical invitation to follow. Cool. I'd love to come. I'll let Amanda know. Thank you, Amanda's dad. Attend that party. Don't use metal utensils on non-stick frying pans. Don't fucking do it! It'll scrape the bottom of your pan, and then you just won't have a fucking pan anymore. Then what was the point of buying the nice non-stick pans? Because you're stupid. Get the little soft utensils. Get the soft ones. Get the little fucking spatula or the little wooden ones. Don't use a fucking metal fork and... What? Absolute fucking putts. Coffee time. You know dads love coffee. Gonna brew myself something black as midnight on a moonless night. Put on a fresh pot and work on a few word jumbles while I wait for it to brew. Hey, this one spells sorrow. Dad! Ready for today? I'm ready for every day, sweetie. Gonna tackle it head on. Mm. No! Are you ready for the thing we're gonna do today? The thing that you promised you'd do? Honey, I already told you that I'm not gonna throw away my Tom Clancy novels. <laughs> They're just stacked in the living room. I keep bumping into them and knocking them over, and you don't even read them. Wait, no, that's that's not what I'm here about. <laughs> the, the tea party, Dad. Nope. I uh, sure don't remember mm -hmm. that. Craig's kids? That hand-drawn invitation? <sighs> Amanda walks over to the refrigerator and comes back with a hand-drawn invitation on a sheet of computer paper, inviting Amanda and Amanda's dad to a tea party. They spelled cordially wrong. Just put on some going outside pants and let's get going. I can go outside in sweatpants. Nothing is stopping me. Hmm. Dad, just, ugh, I'll see you in a minute. Ugh, I guess I'll put on going outside pants. Huh. This is bullshit. <clears throat> oh. Ooh. Hello! Thank you for coming to our tea party! I do my best to bow and present my daughter, who thanks them with a curtsy. This way, please! They're gonna have the exact same voice. They're twins. The exact same voice. Brian and Hazel lead us to a small table with tiny chairs. Shit! Some are accompanied by stuffed animals, and Matt and his daughter Carmen Cita are here, too. What voice should I give Carmen Cita? Oh, no! <clears throat> Matt raises a comically small plastic teacup at me. Hey, dude. How's the tea? Hey, uh... The imaginary tea is absolutely wonderful. Tastes a hint of lemongrass. Hello, Carmen Cita. Hello, Mr. Amanda's dad. Please have a seat. I sit down between Amanda and Matt. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get out of this chair. Hi, everyone! Hey. I turn to see Daisy and Brian enter the backyard and take a seat next to us. 
Sorry we're late. Daisy made me put on my going outside pants. Hmm. Amanda gives me a, lo a knowing look and I return an, ob an obliging wink. She rolls hmm. her eyes. Is it really something your daughter had to pressure you into, Brian? Give Amanda another even more exaggerated wink. And she rolls her eyes even harder. Thank you all for taking- Thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules for some high tea. Actually, it's a common misconception that high tea was appreciated by nobles. <laughs> Dad, shut up! Now, if you'll put on your designated tiaras. <laughs> there are little tiaras sitting on everyone's plate. Well, except for Brian's. His is a softball helmet? Oh, we ran out of tiaras. Ah. I don't think this is gonna fit me, but I appreciate the thought. Dad, your royalty. Please act like it. Whoa! Brian tries to balance the ill-fitting softball helmet on top of his head, but it immediately topples off into the bushes. Hey. I'll get that later. Hey, everybody! Craig comes out with a teapot and a tray of sandwich cookies. Dad, is the tea ready? Oh. Uh, yeah, it's been, uh, steeping for a while now? Awesome. Oh. Would you girls like to serve our, your guests tea? No, thank you. We'd much prefer our servants' help. Craig leans over me. That's me. Craig places the teacups in front of us and a single sandwich cookie to each of our plates. He pours some tea into my cup. Awfully fluorescent for tea. I clink my teacup with mats and take a sip. Good lemonade. It's tea. Oh. Uh, right, right. Ah, uh, very, very good tea. Should I do a bad British accent over like the Valley Boy accent? I lean over to Amanda, who's happily enjoying her tea. How would I even do that? Oh god, I'm gonna offend somebody. Um. Gar? No. Uh, absolutely not. So, what do we do at tea parties? Mm -hmm. We enjoy the splendors of upper, of upper class society, father. She takes a dainty bite out of her sandwich cookie. Marvelous. So, the meaning of princesses has been called to order. Hear, hear. But I'm a warrior princess. I hunt and stuff, and I have, like, a really cool sword. Mm. Can I be a space princess? I'll allow it. And I'll be a rock star princess. I'm also a space princess. Can there be... Can there be more than one? Mm. Space is pretty big, don't you think? changed my mind. I want to be a space princess too. Mm. Dad, what are you? Do I get to be a princess? Duh. Well, I guess that makes me... Ah, oh, we could be a rude boy princess! Hell yeah! <clears throat> or a hacker princess. Let's be a hacker princess. <laughs> I surf the information superhighway on my cyber deck, hacking into the mainframes and unleashing havoc on the megacorps of a dystopian netro neo metropolis. I also rollerblade everywhere. <laughs> I think I'll be landscaper and general contracting princess. Hey. Barista princess reporting for duty. I gave Matt that voice one time, and I fucking suck at it. Bro. Hey, everybody. A CrossFit princess here. Not now, servant. <laughs> Shit. If it weren't for the princess uprising, it would be you serving me. We sip tea for a little longer, than the girls run off to fight dinosaurs as space rock star warrior princesses, I think. They grow up so fast. It was like yesterday I was helping Amanda throw her own tea parties. Did she make you a servant too? You betcha. Carmen Sita actually made me brew tea for hers. Pitfalls of owning a coffee shop. Oh. 
Pitfall? Your custom blends are amazing. That hibiscus one you gave me a while back was choice. Oh. Aw. Thanks. Hey. It's really nice the girls are getting along. Yeah. I really like- I'm really glad that we moved into hey. this community. <laughs> it's nothing but fucking hot dads in this town. Oh. Forgot what I was doing. Jesus Christ. Uh. Oh no. We we are too. Amanda's been kind of a role model for them, you know? I hadn't even realized. I don't even know if Amanda does either, but I guess they're right. All of the girls in the neighborhood look up to her. She seems to go out of her way to play with them. I'm so proud of her. You better not proud dead cry at this tea party, Reptar. I brought extra word jumbles if anybody wants to kill some time while the girls play. The day rolls on and the girls get tuckered out. Amanda spends the whole day playing with them and taking their pictures. Promising that she'll send them the best ones later. We all clean up and put away the tea sets and tables. Then head out as Daisy and Carmen see to fall asleep on their dad's shoulders. Aw, that's so oh. cute. That's still really hot. Fuck. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming. Bye, hacker princess. Mm. What do you want? You want dinner? <laughs> nah, I filled up on cookies. Me too. I'm tired. Mm. Dude, same. Playing with a bunch of little kids who simultaneously want your attention and approval is surprisingly exhausting. Huh? But, in a good way, but also in a kind of scary way. How so? Oh. I feel like I gotta be on my best behavior for them. I don't want to let them down. Is this because you still feel bad about dropping the F-bomb in front of your cousin that one time? I corrupted her, Dad! She secondhand smokes now! <laughs> well, those kids really look up to you. I'm glad they have you as a role mm. model. Shucks, Pops. I ruffle Amanda's hair. Aww. Good tire pressure is essential to optimal mileage. You've got dads. Alright, it's Damien time. Hell yeah. What an absolute fucking sweetie pie. Don't trust gas station egg sandwiches. Anybody that eats a gas station egg sandwich is just preparing their butthole for diarrhea. You cannot convince me otherwise. I've never met somebody. I've had a lot of fun hanging out with Damien the other day. I wonder what he's up to. I open up Dad book and start writing him a message when Amanda walks in the door. Dad, you got a letter. Oh? Is it from Grandpa? Uh? No, it's from Damien. Whoa, can I see it? Amanda hands me a piece of old parchment folded into an envelope and sealed with purple wax. Damn, this dude goes all out. I pry off the seal and unfold the letter. In the most beautiful calligraphy, the letter reads. <coughs> I gotta get close to read this. Dearest Reptar, I hope that you find my continued correspondence endearing rather than trying. One can only hope that my use of the slower and more traditional form of communication will showcase my sincere and earnest sentiment that I greatly enjoyed our time together. I write this hastily under the warm embrace of excitement, fearful that I may misstep and speak towards something unwelcome. For now, I hope that you might forgive my boldness. I will simply say that your company has greatly occupied my thoughts. <laughs> While the afternoon may have been derailed by forces unseen, your companionship helped a great deal, not only in the discipline of my child, but in the morale of my spirit. And for that, I thank you. That said, Reptar, if you will allow me, it would mean the world to me if I would enjoy more of your time. Perhaps a trip to the cinema, followed by a moonlit stroll, would be to your taste. I eagerly w await your response. With great respect, D. Blood March. Oh my god! Do you know how long it's been since somebody's handwritten me a letter? I think I'd fucking just melt. Ugh. Amanda and I look up from the letter. Wow. 
Nobody's written me a letter since, like, fucking middle school. Jesus Christ. He's good. Mm. So you gonna catch a movie with him? Yeah, I better message him on Dadbook and let him know. It just slaps my laptop shut. Dadbook? Let me just hand write you a letter. You're not gonna fucking... Etch a sketch your penis onto a fucking parchment and send it to him? What a noob. What? You have to write him back a real letter. But my handwriting looks like two toddlers fighting over a crayon. Yes. Dad, you have to. He wrote you a letter. That's so cool! Will you help me? I need to class this up. Mm -hmm. Father, I was made for this. Here's what mm -hmm. you do. Find tickets to a show that the two of you will like. <clears throat> and then enclose them in the letter. Oh, that's classy. Amanda and I hop onto my laptop to pursue showtimes. He doesn't seem like a romantic comedy kind of yeah. guy. Oh, here's one. Vampire Crusade 2? Yeah. Evil never dies. We have to be careful with this one. We can absolutely fuck up our chances to, like, romance him. I don't know, that sounds kind of stupid. Actually, it's a critically acclaimed exploration into the... Oh god, I've never seen that word spelled before. A Yui? Mm -hmm. Of existence. It really turns the vampire trope on its head. Really? Mm -hmm. Nah, there's just lots of blood in vampire titties. Oh well, let's roll the dice. I purchase the tickets and print them out, and then sit down at the table with Amanda to try drafting a nice letter. I start writing. Damien. Oh, <laughs> hey. Mm, good morrow to you on this fine eve. That's a good one. Not sure if that checks out, but it looks fine to me. What's next? <laughs> I remember when your son tried to cast off a Maldiagna, that kid. I must confess of my amateur control of the written okay. word. Jeez, Dad, have some faith in yourself. Okay. We're trucking along. Let him know how you're feeling. That earnest shit was pretty messed up. <laughs> you find me in good spirits. Fur felt very much the same after our last encounter. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Ask him to hang out already. True art takes time, Amanda. I found myself enamored by the situation at hand. Like Brugel's landscape, with the fall of Icarus. I find myself lost in your details. Ooh. Ooh. Hmm. Dad? Whoa. I saw it on TV. I'm not an actually intelligent person. Bring it home, Pops. I, dude! Hi! I am romancing, like, technically three dads. This is just date two for Damien. Let me take you out. I got two tickets to the movies. I absolutely should have written that earnest shit was messed up, but also, I would love to date Damien. Um, uh, it would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. That's absolutely the way it should go. Smooth. Calling it the cinema is a classy move. Enclosed, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. Best wishes. Hard depths! Namaste, or we'll carry on. Best wishes is probably the best. I so want to fuck up this letter because I think it's so funny, but best wishes is the best. And then I sign my name, my full name, fancier that way. Reptorbexes. Huh. Is this okay? Amanda reads over my sloppy handwriting. Damien. <laughs> oh no. Oh yuck. This is hard to like look at. Good morning to you on this fine eve. I must confess of my amateur control of the written word. As well as my even more amateur penmanship. Your letter found me in good spirits for it felt very much the same after our last encounter. Like Bruegel's landscape with the fall of Icarus, I find myself lost in your details. It would bring me great pleasure to escort you to the cinema. Enclosed, you'll find two tickets to Vampire Crusade 2, Evil Never Dies, which I'm sure you will find both titillating and enjoyable. Best wishes, Reptar Rexus. It, 
This looks like something my child would write. My child cannot write yet. Hmm. You spelled his name wrong. What? Hmm. Nah, I'm just trying to keep you on your toes. How are you tonight? <laughs> now all you have to do is seal it and put it in his mailbox. Can I seal it with tape? Right. That's not authentic enough. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Amanda leaves the room and returns with a candle, a lighter, and a small piece of wood. You gotta have a wax seal. She lights the candle, which starts to burn down and form a pool of melted wax. <laughs> ah, fair. What's the other thing? How's your QPP? Amanda pours some of the wax onto the folded letter and expertly presses the small piece of wood onto it. She lets it dry for a second and then pulls the wood away, revealing... Here it is. Your sigil. A little kitten with a bow on its head. Lit. <laughs> Scrapbooking stuff always comes in clutch. Well, I guess all there is to do is deliver this to my doorstep now, huh? Oh! Thanks. I like my dad's style, too. I fucking... Hmm. I did something similar in front of my sibling, and she called it fucking cringe. Like, like an actual douche canoe. Oh, I thought we were getting a carrier pigeon to do it. Mm -hmm. I already called my guy. How's Pokemon going? Mm -hmm. I have a pigeon guy. Marcus has the good pigeons. Don't get your pigeons from Anthony. They're no good. I don't want to know if any of this is true. I head outside and walk over to Damien's house. I slip the letter into the slot in his door and head back home. Mm. Mission accomplished? Now we play the waiting game. Ooh! The night finally rolls around where I'm supposed to meet with Damien. The next day, he had left another beautifully crafted letter thanking me for mine and agreeing to the evening. Amanda helps me pick out a nice outfit, and I show up to the theater a little bit early. It's a chilly night, and the theater is kind of crowded, but it's still nice. How do you do? <laughs> I jump at the sound of his voice and turn around to see Damien right behind me. He almost gave me a heart attack! How long were you there for? <sighs> I don't know. I just walked up. My apologies for frightening you. Was that thunder? Is it gonna rain soon? I didn't hear anything. It's so dramatic. What a dramatic little bitch. Absolutely phenomenal. What? Huh. What? What? Hmm. Regardless, the hour grows close. <laughs> Shall we take our seats in the cinema? I must thank you again for purchasing ah. our tickets. Please, allow me to repay the deed in Sour Patch Kids or perhaps... Milk duds? Let's do it. We get in line to buy snacks, and as we're waiting, I hear a familiar voice behind us. Ugh, my dad's here. I turn around to find Lucian standing a few feet behind us with a gaggle of other goth kids. Fair. You're in love with him? The fucking thunder, actually, yeah. He's so dramatic. Uh. Lucian, how nice to see you. I didn't know you were coming to the theater. I'm glad to see you're spending some quality time with your friends. Whatever, Dad. Oh. And what movie will you be attending tonight? My friends are making me see some kid movie about talking animals. I don't really care about it. Oh. Well, I do hope you enjoy your evening. We'll be watching Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. Ha! Ah. <laughs> you? What? What? <laughs> Watching that? Yeah, I thought Damien would enjoy it. Huh. <laughs> Good luck with that, Dad. Lucia rejoins his friends, and I look over to Damien. Good luck with what? It's nothing. My son loves to tease. Oh no! He's got his silly little mouth on. He doesn't have his like usual look. Oh. We wait in line for a little bit longer, and Damien buys us snacks. He seems a little nervous. I wonder what's wrong. He's such a scaredy baby! Ah! Hmm. Damien and I take our seats and settle in for the previews. Glancing at him, I can see he's sweating profusely and gripping his armrest. 
Where was a cube in public? Um. <laughs> uh, oh gosh. I know that there's a very specific way to go about this. <sighs> Everything is perfectly fine. I know that if I push him too hard about the subject of like vamp of like the movie, he's going to get sour and he's going to get like upset, and I don't want that cuz he's such a sweetie pie. He gave me a butterfly. He gave me a taxidermied butterfly loon. He is such a sweetie pie. Huh. I'm so uh, excited for this film. Marry him? I ah! I am a devoted patron of the arts, especially the scary arts. The scarier the art, the better. Do you have a favorite horror movie? I, of course, I have a favorite horror movie. Mine is Halloween Town. Terrifying. <laughs> oh, interesting. That's odd. I don't seem to remember Halloween Town being that scary. I wouldn't expect him to bring up some sort of strange foreign film that I'd never heard of. Yes! He's scared of horror! He's a little scaredy cat! He's a little scaredy puss! Damien's knuckles are turning white. It looks like he's about to rip the armrest off. Oh! Wait a second. Damien, are you afraid of horror movies? <sighs> you must be joking. I love horror movies. The lights dim for the ah! film. <laughs> Damien screams. I apologize. I was thinking about something far scarier than this movie, which is not scary at all. <laughs> he would never- you would scare him one too many times and he would just be like, I can't do this anymore, my little heart. We settle in as the film starts. I offer Damien some licorice and he takes one. I take note of how much his hands are shaking. <laughs> so flashes on the screen in bloody letters. Vampire Crusade 2. Evil never dies. <laughs> A pale man with long silver hair, glittering red eyes, and well-oiled abs sits up in a coffin. Awaken, my coven! Two more vampires slide the tops of their stone coffins onto the floor. Brother! Is it time? Yes, husband, but also mortal enemy! It is time! The three look at each other, and then to the camera. For the Vampire Crusade! Oh gosh, for the Vampire Crusade! This rules! The trio of vampires plays off into the night. Foreboding organ music plays in the distance. They somehow get lost in the movie. As dumb as it sounded, it's actually pretty, like, cool. Ah. We get to a tense moment in the movie where Romulus True Blood sits at a truce meeting with the general of the human army whose wife Romulus has fallen in love with. Romulus. It's so good to finally meet you. General? I agree. <laughs> it's good to finally blood you. <laughs> Romulus leaps up and slashes the general's throat. Blood splatters over everything, including the <sighs> camera. Damien screams again, reflexively grasping my hand. I immediately blush, forgetting about any vampires or blood or vampiric blood. What? Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. Damien retracts his hand and places it back on his lap. No, 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 no. No, I was writing a novel in my head about blood magic, and I got an extremely scary section. Do not retract your little hand. I would love to hold your fingers. <laughs> Damien goes back to quietly stressing out over the movie. It's kind of cute that he won't admit that he's afraid of it. Stop what? He's such a spooky. He's such a little scaredy cat. He's like... It's not that scary. I wish you would hold my hand again. See? See? No takesies backsies. No movie. <laughs> Maybe I could do something to try to make him feel more comfortable. I've got it. I'll do what dads do best. Talk during the movie. Point out a plot hole. Did you notice how that guard fired seven bullets, but his gun only holds six bullets? Yes, that's absolutely unforgivable from a filmmaking standpoint. It's almost unwatchable. It's funny how it's so much easier to point out tiny mistakes and works of others than to actually create your own thing, huh? Hey, look! That's an- that's anar- yeah, anarchism! Huh. The rest of the movie goes by reflexively smoothly. 
which only a few whimpers from Damien. Maybe he would have liked the romantic comedy better. It's nice to blood you, yeah, to blood you. <laughs> we get to the final scene of the movie where Romulus bad blood and the general's wife embrace each other. That's not his name! Wait, hold on, hold on. They said Romulus true blood earlier and now it's bad blood? Pick a blood, buddy. Embrace each other in his crypt. It appears that the true vampire crusade was a vampire crusade in our hearts. Our cold, unbeating hearts. Romulus and the general's wife begin making out hard. Aye. The film fades to black and the end appears on the screen. Then it hard cuts to Demetrius and his rival lover, Cam uh, Carmelia, who watch the two from afar. Hmm. Oh no! Twist ending! Our bloodline has been pure for a thousand years. Romulus has betrayed us by loving a human woman. It will only be a short time before the next vampire crusade dream. Evil must die again. More thunder, more ominous organs. The movie fades out again, and a bloody question mark now accompanies the end. That hurts my throat. <laughs> <laughs> to do the stupid Nick Beauty vampire voice hurts my throat. Damien and I walk out of the movie theater amongst the throngs of chattering moviegoers. He's a little more pale than I remember. But otherwise, he survived the encounter. He seems even kind of invigorated. Oh. What an interesting film. Well, the premise admittedly struck me as pedestrian. I was intrigued by its harrowing love story. In great attention to detail in regards to vampiric lore... Say it's a neck beauty, but no one ever understands what I. Yeah, yeah, it's the same fucking vibe as like, you wanna be my Discord kitten, you be Angela Chungus. That's the vibe. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, a lot more vampire titties than I thought there would be. <laughs> but tell me, that's not the voice I did. I like even threw my fucking chin against my throat and everything. It's fucking chin again. Hmm. Come, the night is young. Let's take a stroll. Hmm. Damien is making a point of not telling me where he's taking me. Still, I'm enjoying the walk in the cool night air. Being alone here with Damien is a lot better than being at a crowded theater. I <laughs> Lovely night, isn't it? Uh. As lovely as the company, yes. <laughs> he thinks I'm lovely! I love that he has all the same reactions that, like, I have. It's so good. Damn, okay. Here comes a smooth response. Gives me... <laughs> Thanks. No problem. I sh should have been like, okay. Ah. Crushed it. Fuck yeah. We both stand there feeling a little awkward. I'm sure I'm one smooth operator. <laughs> Are you getting a little hungry? We can maybe stop off and grab something to eat. Oh. Worry not, friend. I have a plan. My nose itches, but like, I have to not hit the mic. Otherwise, all you hear is... Bah, 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 bah. We turn the corner and are greeted by the gates of a cemetery? Ho oh, what? Are we... Are we going in there? A little bit of Victorian flavor, Reptile. Trust me. Hmm. Hello, Buka. Can I help you? May I help you? Oh, ho, 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 ho. what a good dog. Thank you for joining me on this date with my goth papa. Oh, ho, ho. do you have a ball? Can I have your ball? You're gonna make so much noise with it. Can I have it? Oh, no. Ah, fine. I'm a bit nervous, but Damien hasn't led me wrong yet. I follow his lead as we walk into the cemetery. Statues of angels stare down at us as we follow a path through the faded tombstones. Bruno, give me the ball. Give me the ball. You heckin' goober. You heckin' goober. As we crest a small hill, we get a beautiful top of the city. The night lights sparkle around us. I gotta hand it to him. For being a cemetery, this is strangely romantic. <laughs> ah. Davi, get him. Get him. Picnicking in graveyards is an old Victorian tradition. An appropriate finish to the evening after a vampire movie. Wouldn't you say? 
with a flourish. Damien pursues as a blanket and a picnic basket. I wanna have... I wanna have a picnic in a cemetery? I wish somebody would give me a picnic in a cemetery. Let me have the ball. Give it the... Give me... Give me... Give me the ball. Give me the... Ah! Wait. <laughs> bet. Bet. Happy birthday to you. It's a cemetery picnic. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I would love mini pumpkin cheesecakes. Those sound so cute. Wait, where were you hiding that? I just found this like pot pie bake uh, that I made the other day, and James really enjoyed it. I can make that for you sometime. <clears throat> Under my cloak. Oh right. Damien unfolds the blanket. We both sit down. Gazing at the, <laughs> at the city lights, he produces a bottle of red wine and the fine selection of cheeses. Yeah! I also saw a Julian Solomita video where he made a uh, potato mochi, and it looks fire. It looks so fucking good. I want to try to make it. It looks so amazing. In the Victorian era, there were no public art galleries, parks, or botanical gardens to speak of. Once rural graveyards became a more popular alternative to church burials, they became the only place that people could see beautiful plant life and find sculptures. That makes sense. This is pretty nice. I have a question though. How are you so okay with being in a graveyard, but you had trouble handling a scary movie? I... I... I wasn't. He sighs deeply. Okay, yes, I was extremely scared by the movie. But I was I was not writing a book about blood magic in my head. Oh no, Damien wasn't actually writing a book about blood magic. I just I've never been good at those. I just feel as if because of how I look and act, people expect me to love horror films. So I must play the part. Truth be told, I don't know if I have the constitution for them at times. Damien, I'm so sorry. If I had known, I would have suggested another movie. It's quite alright. I actually did find myself enjoying this one, thanks to your help. Graveyards, however, I think there's something rather beautiful about death. Cemeteries are traditionally built away from cities, away from the realm of the living, and it keeps us rather separated from it. To acknowledge death and become comfortable with it, I think, gives us a certain intimate knowledge of ourselves. To sit amongst generations of those who came before us, to be truly alive in the midst of so much death, Brings me great comfort. I mean, fair. I am not like a gore whore. I just, I can't do it. Like, it just looks sloppy. Like, if that's what your vibe is, that's one thing. But personally, I like a good, like, play on the mind. If it has some death and murder, sure, okay. But, mm. <clears throat> Death helps me appreciate life, to savor every second. A true goth. A true goth. To find beauty in the macabre. We sit and enjoy our food and wine. I don't feel scared anymore. Never thought I'd be comfortable sitting around, al sitting alone in a graveyard at night. But I actually feel very peaceful. You're not alone! You're not alone! You have your goth daddy! Fair. Huh. Suddenly, it doesn't seem like we're alone. Off to the distance, I see a shadowy figure in the trees. What is that? Ugh. I'm, I'm not sure. Huh. It noticed us. I'm paralyzed with fears. It begins lumbering slowly towards us. Its shape taking a more animal form, more feral. I look to Damien for help, but he's just as afraid and transfixed as I am. I want to scream, but it's stuck in my throat. The creature is getting closer, moving Ugh. faster. Woof! Hmm. Oh. Oh. It's a dog. Is it finally? <laughs> Look at him, what a guy! <laughs> As it finally comes into light, the friendliest, dumbest little Boston Terrier I've ever seen pulls its owner towards us. Look at him! Look at his big goofy. Does he have his tongue out? He has his tongue out. <laughs> what a baby, indeed! Ah! <laughs> the dog trots. <laughs> <laughs> the dog trots over to Damien and sniffs at his hands. He said, could I have some cheese? Could I have some cheese and some crackers, please? Damien looks ecstatic. He ruffles the dog's fur happily. Uh. 
What a beautiful dog. <laughs> hey. We both look up, not expecting to see. Thanks. Oh. Robert? Robert, what are you doing out here on such a lovely evening? Huh. Hunting cryptids. What? Hmm. Poor. <laughs> I didn't know you had a dog. This isn't my dog. <laughs> I found her wandering the street. I put a leash on her. Now we're walking around this graveyard together. This is the vibe Robert gives me. Mm. Hunting cryptids. Does that mean you're looking for Bam Margera? Is Bam Margera is technically a cryptid in Pennsylvania now. Uh. Damien and I share a look. Uh. May I give her a treat? Mm. Sure. Wouldn't give her cheese, though. <laughs> Not to worry. Damien reaches in the depths of his cloak and produces a... Procures a small dog treat. What else is he keeping in there? The dog laps up the treat and crunches away. <laughs> Till wagging furiously, Damien continues to smooth it on her fur. What a sweet bean. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> My absolute pleasure. Damien shakes the dog's paw. Lovely to meet you, my friend. May our paths cross again. Robert and his dog? Disappear into the darkness again. Damien stares after them. I don't know you like dogs. Oh. Victorians love dogs, actually. Most Victorian women of high fashion would always be accompanied by a small dog, such as a terrier or a Maltese. I, um, think big dogs are nice, too. Yeah, man, dogs are cool. Oh. I do believe we've had enough excitement for one night. What say we make our way home? Damien hops to his feet and extends a hand to help me up. I gladly take it as my knees aren't what they used to be. He packs up his picnic basket and leads us out of the graveyard. As we begin the walk home, I take one last look at the cemetery. It really is beautiful. Uh -huh. <gasps> Boys! Excuse me, everybody. One moment. Do not cut me that look either. Other people can exist without your help. Like a proper gentleman, Damien walks me to my doorstep. Sorry, everybody. They are doing their job as protectors. But it means they biff and they bork. Oh. Thank you ever so ki kindly for your company tonight. Damien, it was my pleasure. Reptar, if you'll allow me. It would bring me great joy to offer you a token of my affection. A token of your affection? <laughs> Damien reaches into his cloak and pulls out a folded monogrammed handkerchief. Ah! First a butterfly and now a handkerchief? Oh my goodness. Well. He presses it into my hand. Wow. Thank you, Damien. Oh, I will use this to dry my tears for those I've lost. That feels appropriate. I can't wait to sneeze on this. A noble purpose- I got the end but ah! Ah! <laughs> Damien shuffles his feet. Hmm. I- I just want to say that it's rare to find someone like you. Someone who's open to my eccentricities. Hmm. It's nice to feel so appreciated. Thank you. Damien gives my hand a quick squeeze. Damien blushes and hastily retracts his hand. Ah, oh, no! Let me hold your hand! I, uh, I must take my leave. Good night. Before I can say anything else, he's gone! Huh. I unlock the door and step inside. Like a whirlwind, Amanda runs from the window and plops down on the couch, trying to look nonchalant. Hey, Dad! What's up? Were you watching me from the window? No, I was just, uh... Okay, yes. How was the movie? Lots of vampire titties. Told you. But, as it turns out, Damien is... Sc Wait, Amanda doesn't need to know that. I'll keep that between me and Damien. Sca scary cool, yep. He's so cool, it's scary. Nice save, Reptar. 
Do you know that graveyards used to be a place to throw parties? I think I'm misremembering that. Wow, that's pretty punk. Also, we saw a dog. Definitely thought it was a werewolf for a minute, though. How can you be so sure it wasn't a werewolf? How can you be so sure I'm not a werewolf? And how can I be so sure that you're not a werewolf? Amanda's eyes narrow. I don't trust you. Nor I you. We make intense, weary eye contact for a second. Anyway, I'm calling it for the night. Don't stay up too late, will you? I'll try not to howl at the moon past midnight. If the police are driving behind you, don't give them probable cause to pull you over. We did it! Let's see what we get! Ah! Uh, please, please. Are you familiar with the works of Corey Feldman? He simply slayed in the Lost Boys. He simply slayed in the Lost Boys! What an absolute fucking dreamboat! Ah! Managing debt is just part of being Welcome. an adult. You've got dads. Okay. No, dad, dad book. We'll we'll address that later. No, 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 no. Um, let's go to options. Yeah, let's go ahead and save right here because it doesn't. It saves on the last scene. It doesn't save here. All right. That was amazing. That was so amazing. We did it. We did the thing. We got. We got like S rank. We gave. We almost got the kisses. Ah! Do fuck my little puppy crush that made us. Ah! He's such a sweetie. He is so like impeccable and just a cutie patootie, and I love him dearly. I got to read Naruto smut in his house the first time we met. And then his son tried to cast of Amontiago, some other kid, like Hugo's son. And I just, I, he gave me a taxidermy butterfly. Absolute sweetie, cutie patootie. Just goth papa. Um, but I'm that one plant dude. This has been Dream Daddy. I will see you guys tomorrow for... <laughs> That's so fair. That's so... It, it gives big sleepover vibes. I will see you guys tomorrow for God of War. Um, make sure to follow me across the board on all of my socials. Um, and again, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye, Loon. Goodbye!